have a look at the DOFs. So, auxiliary power to initial dampers. If you've got this guy on, where is he? Da -da -da -da. This one here. Matter antimatter specialist. Increase resistance to energy damage for 23 seconds when auxiliary power to dampers is activated. So, plus 40, all energy damage resistance rated for 23 seconds. So that's really nice. Uh, I'm going to see that working. Let's make some of it a bit smaller. Back to stats. So if I hit ox to inertial dampers, you now see all the resistance have gone up. And it, it extends the duration of that for quite a long time, 23 seconds. Back to DOFs. Marion Francis Dolmar is the one that I was telling you about with the uh, directed energy modulation. Great, it reduces weapon subsistence energy drain for, for 8 seconds when DEM is activated. So you've got 200, 200 resistance to weapon subsystem energy drain for 8 seconds. So that basically means that you are massively overcapped when you're using DEM, it gives you the maximum advantage. Uh, obviously DEM 3 gives you the most, most shield pen. Um, another one if you're using RSP is the Fabrication Engineer, here he is, increases the duration of reverse shield polarity by uh, 6 seconds. Now I think that's a rare one, if you go for a purple one I believe it's 10 seconds, something like that. I might even have one of those, let's have a look. So, let's see... There we go, looks like I've got the wrong one in. So we'll get rid of him, and put him in. 8 seconds, so the other one was 6 seconds, this one's 8 seconds. Which means that I'm going to get RSP for 17.3 seconds. That's a lot of RSP. Good chance to either get away or rebuild your whole shield. Don't think it's just because RSP is up you should try to rebuild your shields. Because they will go down quickly if you don't. So, brace for impact with the shield distribution officer, a chance to restore shields when taking damage or brace for impact is, is active. So when you use brace for impact, this guy gives you a 10% chance to get a pretty reasonable shield heal. It's not, it's not much of a chance but it, it happens more often than you perhaps realise. We've got lore here, which you get from one of the missions uh, in the wasteland. Uh, let's have a look. It's one of these. Gives you the law. I think it's the Undyne or Blyman, Tell Tales, one of those. Um, projectile weapons officer, chance to reduce time to recharge torpedoes. You've got 20% chance to improve recharge time by 5 seconds. Oh, close that for. Okay, let's look at the other ones we've got on here. I've got a diplomat on here, team abilities, 25% chance, minus 34.9 weapon power to attacker. So that's that's probably one that I put on there for uh, for PvP. There is a huge selection of duty officers you can use for all kinds of different build styles. Um, but they need to be taken into account um, to get the best out of your build. Um, so you plan your build kind of build am I making, it's a fire at will uh, cruiser in this case, I definitely want stuff on there that um, improves my fire at will, improves my damage, improves my resistances and things working together like the DOF for ox to inertial dampers, uh, Marion uh, on DEM, um, all that kind of thing can make a big difference to your final result. Uh, 
Another thing we want to look at is traits you should have on your ship. So <coughs> there are a few interesting ship traits that you can get now. Unfortunately, a lot of these require you to buy the ship, level its mastery, which is this part here. See, so when you buy a, a sea store ship, you'll get five levels of mastery. Um, the fleet version only has four, because the idea is that you buy the one off the sea store with its five levels. Once you've got the mastery, you keep the trait. The trait is on your character, not on your ship. And then you get the fleet version, which gives you an extra console and a few other nice bits. But the mastery gives you the starship traits. And some of the ones you really want to be looking out for are desperate repairs which when critically hit it grants a desperation counter and when you get three counters you get 5,000 5, shield regen and 25,000 hit points now on a smaller ship uh, escort or something that's huge I've seen people go from almost dead to almost full using desperate repairs uh, and it's passive you don't have to do anything yourself it, it just works uh, Another one is Reciprocity. Oh yeah, this Desperate Repairs is from the Guardian. The Reciprocity, which is from the Phantom, or if you're an, uh, a Romulan or a Klingon, you can get it from the latest lockbox, the um, Year of Hell lockbox. But basically what it does is when you're missed, and you're missed a lot by other players and NPCs, you get a 10% recharge time on Intel and Tactical Bridge Officer abilities. So stuff like fire at will, tag team, um, <sighs> chemocyte, any any other tactical, or if you've got an Intel ship which is using things like um, Intel team, obviously, evade target lock, uh, override safety subsystems, and surgical strikes three, any of those, every time you're missed, you get 10% recharge time. It's a bit like having a, an ox to bat for tack only, uh, tack and Intel great trait, really worth getting the ship for. Pedal to the Metal, that's the one that you get from the specialization tree, uh, it's the pilot tree, when you reach uh, halfway through, uh, tier 15, or 15 points spent, you get this this trait here, which is 1% all damage bonus per 2 seconds spent at full throttle, max is 10 stacks. Um, as soon as you back off your throttle, all the stacks are lost. Uh, if you go all the way, which I don't bother with this ship, if you get to uh, 30 points spent in here, that doubles. You get 2% more damage, up to 10 stacks, up to 20% more damage. But you can't keep moving. So it's fast moving, escort stuff like that. Often I find in, uh, in this ship that I might even be going in reverse more often than going forward. But it's still a nice trait, but I will be replacing it with something else like All Hands on Deck, which I won't talk about here because I don't have it, so I don't have the details, but I've got it on another ship. Look it up, All Hands on Deck, worth buying the ship for. Uh, I'm also using Command Frequency, which is a way of allowing you to call in your fleet support without having the low hull lockout. That's from the command, uh, command tree get to tier 15, uh, 15 points you get the Starship Trade Command Frequency you still got to wait I think it's 8 minutes let's see what it says here cool down reduction by 5 minutes it might be 10 minutes then when you get to the bottom and you've filled that tree then the cool down is reduced by 10 minutes so that means every 5 minutes call out a ship. So, I'm not sure if it works out of combat, but uh, let's see if it does. No, it doesn't work out of combat. You've got to be in combat. But if you're farming, if you're doing a long mission, it's great. You can build up, you can build up two, three, four Presidio class ships or whatever they send you. Um, really nice. They do a lot of damage and they last a long time. They've got big tough hulls. Uh, really nice one to use. 
and if you're doing something like ISA, Effective Space Advanced, then these can boost your damage because the DPS League allows you, DPS settings allows you to count pets damage as your own and these are counted as pets and it can do some pretty decent damage. So that's the traits that I've got on here. Then your space reputation. Um, I generally run this ship at a high right one. At a high ox and high weapons. Weapons maxed. Um, and ox as high as I can get it. And the reason for that is that I'm using to do Kara offensive and defensive um, passives. So the higher your auxiliary power, the more you're going to get. Now I'm seeing here, look, 18.8 kinetic and energy damage resistance is adding to my ship. Uh, and another 4.7% shield. And for offense, plus 4.7% accuracy and damage based on your ox power levels. Pretty impressive stuff. And the only other two that you obviously goes without saying, advanced targeting systems gives you another big bunch of crit severity and precision, obviously, plus 4% hit chance. I would imagine that this particular one is uh, enabled by just about anyone in the game, which means I'm really pleased that with the new research station, Fleet Holding will be able to unlock an additional I think it's an additional trait, space rep, ground rep as well, and yes, active reputation as well. Active rep, things like the molecular shield bubbles, really good at rebuilding your shields. Um, your Romulan singularity, uh, sorry, quantum singularity for the Romulan uh, reputation, brilliant. The new car reputation, in fact, in Tetrion Cascade, that's okay. And um, one that I use uh, on the ground finds just you dying a lot on the ground. Really pretty cool. Personal traits. Some of them go without saying, others you perhaps haven't heard of. Blade of Shell is quite a cheap one on the exchange. Really good. Uh, it's got a great effect. You can see all the hull peeling off when you hit. Uh, gives you some good temporary hit points uh, and damage resistance rating. Well worth fitting that one on. Another one uh, which everybody wants and not many have got uh, because of the ridiculous, stupid price, uh, 150, 200 million EC, because it's rarity. Um, inspirational leader, basically what, what it does is, if you read past all the bull crap here, um, every time uh, you trigger a bridge officer ability like uh, torpedo spread you've got a 10% chance uh, to add plus 10 to all starship skills so basically it's a boost to it's a boost to all these by plus 10 every time let's go back to the right page and that's pretty epic uh, because it stacks three times yeah, you heard me right. Read it yourself. 10% chance activating any bridge officer ability grants plus 10 to all starship skills for 15 seconds. May stack up to three times. I've seen it stack three times. It stacks twice, plenty of times. Um, you can see a little stack counter here. You see that one's got a number one on it. It's just for seconds. But if you see it, it's inspired, it says. It will have, have a little thing there. I don't know if it's going to come up here if I just do it. It's not working now, of course, because I'm showing you stuff. So you see? Inspired crew there, let me see. So I've now got buffs to all my abilities. And it will stack three times. That's why everybody wants it. Get it if you can. Um, don't worry if you can't. A lot of people don't have it. Going back to more reasonable um, personal traits. Pattern recognition is a nice one. Stacks stacks four times. Gives you a bit of defense and shield hardness. Uh, da, 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 
and uh, fail safe scramble. This is great in PvP. When you're below 20% hull, placates all foes within 10 kilometers for five seconds. Um, every 90 seconds. And what it's like is the entire screen just fizzles, goes to fizz. It's like the antimatter spread. You can't see the target anymore. Uh, it's a pain in the ass if you're shooting somebody and they've got that fitted. Um, but it's it's a real get out of jail free card for the person that's got it on. Um, and I think the only reason I've got it on here is that I was PvPing in this last time I used it. Perhaps I wouldn't use it all the time. Hamilton's a nice one. Gives you uh, 10% turn rate and evasive uh, maneuvers cooldown reduced by 10 seconds. Another good one. This, this is nice. Biotech patch. Basically, it, it improves any heals you got. So, the engineering team has the limiters, blah blah blah. 20% bonus hull healing effectiveness. So, any hull you've got, it will be increased by 20% with that trait on. Uh, there are lots and lots and lots of traits and uh, if you want to know which are the good ones basically have a look at which are the expensive ones and the two usually go together but there's some of the some of the good ones um, that you should have on your ship 